Hi, it's Chris Hitchko with Show Up Academy. Today we're going to go over a very common question we get from a lot of our clients. How do you determine how many calories you should be consuming? So we do this calculation based off of a workout day and a non-workout day. So we shouldn't be consuming the same amount of calories every single day. Now, most of you are going to beg the question, well, I don't want to count calories. That's fine. You don't have to. The best analogy I have is if you're driving on the freeway, are you getting tickets? If you're getting a lot of tickets, then maybe you should think about slowing down and monitoring your speed. If you're not, continue what you're doing. So if you're happy with your body image, cool. If you're not, maybe you should count your calories for a couple weeks and see if it makes, it, it makes a difference in the long term. So we're going to take a male who's 170 pounds. He's lifting weights five days. Now it's called your BMR. It's your basal metabolic rate. And for men, you're going to take this and you're going to multiply it by 10. For females, you're going to multiply it by 9. Make sure not to go below 1,200 calories if you're a female. Consult with a registered dietitian to make sure it fits your body. We're not dietitians. We're just doing a, a consult here. So we're going to take this 170-pound male, times it by 10. That's going to give us roughly, it's going to give us exactly 1,700 calories. And that's how many calories his brain, his heart, his liver, his muscles need to sustain that build of 170 pounds. So what we need to beg the question is, what is your ultimate goal? And it's his goal to gain or lose? Lose. He wants to lose. So a lot of guys, he want the nice stomach. They want bigger arms. So if he wants to lose weight on a non-workout day, we want, to we would want to take away some calories for it to be in a deficit. So on a non-workout day, I would challenge this guy to probably consume whether 1,700 to 1,600 calories. And then you have the activity factor, which over here we're going to have a 1.375, 1.55, 1.725, and 1.9. If you look at the legend, 1.375 is me three days you're working out, 1.55, three to four. 1.725, five to six, 1.9 double days, putting out a lot of energy. And then you're gonna have like elite athletes who are working out two, three, four hours a day. You may have to do another multiplier. One athlete I had one time, I gave him a multiplier of four. He needed about 7,000 calories. It's probably not you. So make it, my challenge to you is to undershoot. So if he's shooting five times a week, I'm gonna give him an activity factor of 1.55. So I'm gonna take 1,700 times it by 1.55, and that's gonna give me roughly 26.35. So again, he's trying to lose some weight, so I, we wanna be in a deficit. You can take away as many as you like. Once you start going greater than 1,000, you may, not may, you're probably gonna start utilizing more protein as a fuel source. So monitor this. I'm gonna suggest on a workout day that this guy, I get maybe 2,400 calories. I'm going to suggest that he's getting his body weight and protein, maybe even a little more to make sure to maintain that anabolism and to minimize the catabolism of his muscle or protein degradation. That's your BMR, your basal metabolic rate times the activity factor. Workout day, 2400, non-workout day, maybe 17. That's the hypotheticals. It all looks great on paper, but then we have the realistic aspect, which is individualism. I gotta consult with this person and have some feedback. How do you feel? How are your energy levels? If this guy was getting 3,500 calories, which is unlikely if he's weighing 170 pounds, so let's just pretend he was, and I tell him now to go down to 1,700, that's just not realistic. You're gonna be screwed up mentally. Long-term sustainability is very, very low. What if he was getting 1,200 calories? Who knows? Some guys do. And now all of a sudden you tell him on a workout day to, to get an extra 1,200 calories, he's going to be complaining about constantly being full. I can't eat enough. I'm an ectomorph. I get that one a lot. So it's, it's individualized. I always challenge people to get a baseline, calculate what you're getting, and then if your goal is weight loss, measure yourself every month or so. Not just on the scale, do body fat, but most importantly, how your clothes feel and do some before and afters. And if you're not getting the definition that you like, modify it. So maybe you can use a lower multiplier. And here's the thing, people try a new program, they start going lower in calories, and they start complaining that I have low energy levels. Three days into it. No shit, if you're eating 3,500 calories and you start eating 1,700, you're gonna have lower energy levels. It's all about your mindset and how you program that. If you go into a diet, this is gonna suck, I can't eat my favorite foods, oh, I gotta work out, and you have a poor mindset, the likelihood of long-term sustainability is very low. But if you go on there saying, I'm gonna make this the best me, I'm gonna make this diet, which truly means what you eat on a regular basis, and I'm gonna love doing it, I'm gonna eat what I want, but I'm gonna modify my portions, 
and you maintain that positive mindset, then the sustainability long term to make this a lifestyle is going to be high. Don't get frustrated if you fail. One day, if you're supposed to be getting you know, 2,400 and you get 2,900 because you had some cheesecake, laugh it off. That's fun. I bet you the cheesecake was good. Who cares? Next day, get back to your program. It's your default thinking that's going to help you be successful long term. So if you have a couple days or even a week where you're not being great and restricting or adhering to your diet, don't worry about it. Get back onto it long term, 52, 56 weeks in here, whatever it is. Try to hit that as your main number. So this is your basal metabolic rate. Basal metabolic is your baseline calories for a workout day, non-workout day. Males take 10, females take nine. Make sure not to go below 1,200 if you're female. We don't want to get amenorrhea, which is a lack of menstruation. If that does happen, make sure you're consulting with your RD. Activity factor times BMR, it's gonna give you your workout day, but make sure to individualize it. Check us out at showupacademy.vhx.tv to subscribe to our channel.